Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up a React project with Tailwind CSS. And if you don't know about Tailwind, Tailwind CSS is a utility-first CSS framework for rapidly building custom user interfaces, and it includes a set of base styles as well as features like responsive breakpoints, cross-browser compatibility, and modularity. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you guys how to set up Tailwind with React, and I'll also be demonstrating one of the built-in components that Tailwind has, and I'll show you how to implement it in your projects. So with that being said, let's... All right, so I've created a plain React project, as you can see here, using NPX Create React App on the left. And on the right, I have the Tailwind documentation open for integrating Tailwind CSS with React, and you can find this documentation at this URL right here. So to get started with installing Tailwind and configuring it for React, you'll need to copy this long command that you see right here. And I'll have all these commands in the description listed as command one, command two, and so on. So I'm just going to copy this first command right here and then paste it into my integrated terminal in VS Code. And I'm just gonna hit enter. And this command is used to install Tailwind, okay? And once you install Tailwind, once it finishes installing, you're going to go to this command right here, command number two, and this command is used to install something called Krako. And Krako is needed because Create React App does not allow us to override the post CSS configuration, so we're going to need Krako to um, configure Tailwind. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And once it's been installed, as you can see right here, you're just going to go into your package.json file. And what you're going to do here is replace these three lines right here with these three lines in the green. So I'm just going to copy these three lines and replace these three with these three. And what this is going to do is replace the React scripts with Krako, all right? And once we do this, we're gonna to need to create a krako.config.js file at the root of our project. So what I'm going to do to create the configuration file for Krako is just to go up here and click on this new file icon. And then I'm going to name this file krako.config.js, okay? And inside of this file, I'm just going to paste this that you see right here, right? These lines. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it inside of this krako.config.js file. And once we create the krako.config.js file, we're gonna to need to create the configuration file for Tailwind. So to create the configuration file for Tailwind, we're just going to copy this command right here, command number three, into our terminal. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste it. And once you hit enter, it's going to create a file called tailwind.config.js. And we're just gonna to need to go into this file and edit this purge option that you see right here. So we're just gonna replace this purge option with this um, purge option. So we're just going to replace this original purge option with this option in the green. So I'm just going to copy this entire line and replace the original one with this one. Okay. And now we just need to add tailwind in our index.css file located in our source directory. So just open up your source directory and then go into index.css. And at the very top of this file, you're going to paste these three lines right here. So just copy all of these lines right here and then paste it and you won't need this comment at the very top. So just paste these three lines. And finally, we just need to make sure that index.css is imported in our um, index.js file. And if we go and check, you can see that it is. So now that we have this done, we've basically configured Tailwind with React. So our configuration part is complete and what I'm going to do next is show you guys how to actually use Tailwind. So now that Tailwind has been set up with React, this is what we're going to be building with Tailwind. And this is just a simple card that I created that has a title and a description that just says, hello, this is a demonstration of Tailwind CSS being used. And the way that this card is going to be built is actually very simple and straightforward. So with that being said, let's begin building it. Okay, so I have my editor on the left and my app up and running on the right and I started my server using npm start. 
And what I'm going to do first is just remove all of this code and create an empty function component using the RFCE snippet from the ES7 um, snippets extension in VS Code. And I'm first just going to create the card itself and then I'll explain to you guys what each of the classes in Tailwind do. Okay, so I'm going to first start off with this outer div and give it a class name of flex, flex column, justify center, items center, and then I'm going to create another div, and then class name m-10, p-10, bg green 400, rounded to Excel, and shadow Excel. Okay, save my changes. And then now that we have the actual card built, I'm going to uh, create the content inside of the card. So I'm going to do, I'm going to first create another div inside of this uh, div for the card, and then give it a class name of flex, flex call, and then h1, and then p tag, and then give the h1 a class name of text to xl. So text to xl font semi bold with title inside of it and then I'm going to give this p tag a class name of font light and the content inside of this p tag is just going to be hello this is a demonstration of tailwind css being used okay and now you can see that our card has been built so what do all of these classes mean so this flex on this first div over here will give this div a display of flex. The flex hyphen call will give it a flex direction of column. The justify center means that it will justify the content inside of this, inside of this div to the center. And this items hyphen center is going to align items to the center. And this is for the div, which is the container for this page. Okay. And then this child div that you see right here is the actual card. So this M-10 will give this card a margin of 2.5 rem on all four sides of the card so that it's not stuck to the top of this page. So if I remove this, you can see that the card is stuck to the top of the page. But if I give it that margin of 2.5 rem on the outside, you can see that it's brought down a little bit. Okay. And then this P-10 will give this card an inner padding of 2.5 rem. The BG Green 400 is the color of this card. So the BG means background, the green is the color, and 400 is the shade of green. So if I change this 400 to a 500, this card's color is going to be darker. If I change it to 300, it's going to be lighter. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. And then this rounded hyphen 2XL is what gives this card this rounded look that you see right here. And I just put this 2XL that you see right here since this rounds this card a bit more compared to the default XL value, which you can see right here. So I just like 2XL, so that's why I put it there. And then this shadow hyphen XL is what gives this card a box shadow. And the same thing goes for this as well. I can change this XL to something like 2XL and it'll have more box shadow. But if I change it back to XL, it's gonna have um, less box shadow, okay? And then this div tag that you see here is for the content that's inside of this card. So the content contains the title and the description. So for this div tag, I gave it a display of flex and flex direction of column by doing the flex hyphen column. And then for the title itself, I created an h1 tag and gave it a class of text to Excel, which is going to make it appear larger since it's a title and font of semi bold so that the font weight is higher compared to the default and so that the font is also a little bit more bold since this is a title okay and then for the p tag everything is default except i've made the p tag um, a bit more lighter using the font light class and of course you can adjust this from the docs as well all right guys that's pretty much it for this video i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found this informative and just to recap what we did in this video, we first had a React project and then set it up with Tailwind by installing things required in order to use Tailwind. We adjusted the configuration files for Tailwind, used Krako instead of React scripts in our package.json file, 
and once we had all of the Tailwind stuff set up, we built this card using Tailwind. Now, just to clarify, I know that some of these class names that you see here might seem a little confusing if you're just starting to learn Tailwind. So what I would recommend doing is going to the Tailwind docs over here at tailwindcss.com and just searching things up that you need help with. So for example, if I needed help with the margin in Tailwind, then I can just search up margin and you can see all of the inbuilt classes for margin as well as how they're written in traditional CSS. Now, if I needed help with padding, then I can just search up padding and you can see the same thing for padding. There's all of these inbuilt classes um, in Tailwind CSS for padding along with the traditional CSS over here on the right. And let's say that I needed help with something like um, this border radius, then I can just search up border radius and you can see all of the configurations for this border radius property. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. And I hope you found this informative. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I do apologize for this late upload. I've just been really busy with schoolwork, so I haven't been uploading as often. But I will have more videos coming out soon. And if you have any questions about this, make sure to leave them in the comments. And with that being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video.